Oh, another blue. Okay. What I do then? Oh, okay. Um. Oh, there we go. It's a purple. Oh, and then they slide all the way over there. Hmm. Oh, hi, gang. It's Pastor Lou here. I'm just learning a new game that someone gave me for Christmas. It's called, let's see here, Oddly Amazing Fredericksburg, the Fredericksburg board game. You see, I have an otter in my hand. Well, anyway, it's a cold day, so I thought I'd play a game inside. So I'm learning it. Do you like playing board games? I always have. Everything from shoots and ladders and trouble to Monopoly, Scrabble, even a long, hard game called Risk. I love all games. I think it's because I get to spend time with friends and family while having fun. But you know, come to think of it, way back when, when I was small, sometimes the games weren't so fun. Can I tell you a secret? Shh. Don't tell anyone because he might be embarrassed. But my baby brother used to cheat. That's right. He cheated. No fair! I would get so mad when we were small, and we might even end up in a fight. Yet as I grew up, I found a better way to handle things. If he didn't play right, I'd get up and just walk away. Yep, that did it. After a while, he'd miss the fun we were having, and he would look for me to apologize. Then, if he promised to play fairly and not goof around, I said we could go back to that game. And you know what? That worked. It's true. Even better than that, my brother eventually learned that it was better not to cheat at all. He got tired of me walking away, and so he just learned to do the right thing. In today's gospel, we join Jesus in his hometown. The day started out great. He was among people who he grew up with, and they had heard about the miraculous things he'd been doing recently in Capernaum. They were so excited to have him back home that they invited him to speak in the synagogue. Now, if you don't know what a synagogue is, it's kind of like a church for Jewish people. And Jesus had grown up in a Jewish family. Anyway, once he finished preaching, many of his friends and neighbors started to get very upset. Instead of listening, they started to unfairly judge him. How could Jesus know so much? Wasn't he just that poor carpenter's son? Who was he to say the scriptures were about him and that he would be our savior? Some must have thought he was too big for his britches or even making fun of them. Even worse, some probably suspected that he might be making fun of God by claiming these outlandish, crazy things. They heard Jesus, but they didn't really hear him. You see, they thought they knew everything about him, but it turned out they hardly knew anything, for he was the Son of God. Well, Jesus knew what they were thinking, and he challenged them on it. He tried to tell them they were wrong, but as they got madder and madder, he knew they weren't playing fair, or maybe even with a full deck. So he got up and started to walk away. This made the crowd even more angry, and they took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. Oh my! Do you know what he did then? Well, as the Son of God, he could have called fire down upon them. He could have asked angels to fight them. He even could have ended their life with simply a word. But he didn't. He knew he was right. He knew he was the Son of God, and he just walked right through them and went on his way. Now, you might think Jesus was sad at this treatment. He might have even been mad. I'm sure he felt those kind of things. After all, they had known him all his life, and now they had, in a way, turned the board game over on him in anger. Yet as mad and sad, and even as disappointed in them as he was, I think it's good to know that even then, Jesus showed them mercy and love. He had taken a break, and he walked away from what was happening. Here's the thing to remember. Even though Jesus walked away, Jesus didn't quit on them forever. He still loved them, 
and he still hoped they would join him again as friends. Jesus didn't quit sharing God's love. He didn't stop healing people or forgiving people. He wanted people to change their ways and follow him. And that's the way Jesus is with us when we sin, when we treat people unfairly or do what's wrong. Now, he might get sad or mad at us, and he's certainly at times disappointed in us. But he always loves us, because in the game of real life, Jesus came to help imperfect people like you and me enter his kingdom and live with him forever as his family. Let's pray, shall we? Let's make prayer hands. Gracious, loving God, in life there are times we feel like winners or losers. There are times where we might even be tempted to cheat or do what's wrong. And there's sometimes when things just don't go right and we feel abandoned and alone as if there was no one to play with us or even love us. Yet in coming as Jesus, you, God, teach us the game is never over. You always love us. You're always with us, and you hope for the best for us. You're always ready to forgive us and help us start again. Thank you, Lord, for our family, our friends, and community. In living with others and playing with them, help us to be more like you day by day. Help us to listen to Jesus and believe. Amen. Well, that's it for this week. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Be good in school, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye.